Hello and welcome to Middle Market Executives Growth Monitor, where we speak to middle market business leaders about the key drivers of growth across the nation. Today we speak to Tom Fitzsimmons, CFO of TMP Worldwide, which today bills itself as the world's leading recruiting and advertising agency. Having served as CFO at TMP since 2010, Fitzsimmons is today responsible for the firm's global financial operations, but can also be found along its front line seeking to trigger new growth and innovation. His career includes tours of duty with middle market firms, both small and large. We begin by asking Fitzsimmons to explain the expanding role CFOs are today playing when it comes to driving top line growth. I, you know, there, there are a couple of areas where finance finance can help with the growth. And, and you know, for, first and foremost is is understanding the, the, the product that your company and the product and services your company is delivering, the value it has in the marketplace, and, and how to work with your uh, sales staff and your account service staff to keep that, that basket of services and products priced appropriately or, or packaged correctly. I think a, a lot of times in organizations, Sales and service fails to recognize that their finance department has a very good understanding and their CFO has a very good understanding of how other companies' CFO and purchasing departments think and what current thought is on how to negotiate price and how to negotiate contracts. So that's the first place, how how to keep your methodologies current and how to work with with your staff so that they can work with the client side CFO and purchasing people who are looking for pricing arrangements. We keep hearing how finance's influence has grown when it comes to the HR function, and we're led to believe that this is particularly true inside mid-market accounts. What what exactly is happening here? You know, when you when you look at the history of manufacturing. You know, we make more goods today in this country than we made 30 years ago, and we make it with far less people. Just like, you know, when you dial back 150 years and look at agriculture, we grow a lot more food today with far less people than we grew 100 years ago. Natural natural evolution and progression. Companies are going to, their company's principal investment in asset is going to be their people. At some point, particularly from public companies and particularly from M&A evaluation, we're going to have to come up with a methodology to say, this is what your core staff is worth. When you look at non, uh, non-manufacturing businesses, in particular service-oriented businesses, their single largest component of cost is, is going to be the people, the care and feeding, the training, the development uh, of those people. So in some respects, it makes perfectly logical sense for uh, the CFO to to step in and understand that role. This is a, a you know departure. In the past, if you had a manufacturing facility, there were clearly uh, analyses done by finance that said, "What's my ROI for building a new facility and investing in machinery, and how do I get that money back out?" Now we have to do the same with people. What's my what is my ROI? What is what is my opportun- or my opportunity cost? If I have positions that go unstaffed, what revenue is not being generated or time not being billed or work not being performed in in the time period I, I planned to have it performed and, and therefore I now have a downstream cash impact. I'm I'm not sending invoices out, so therefore there's no there's cash not being collected. Having served as a finance leader inside multiple mid-market firms, how did the size of the company alter your role, say, as a finance leader? You know, in some level, a lot of the day-to-day challenges and a lot of the day-to-day issues are the same. The difference is the degree of rounding. I worked in companies. I worked in a company years ago in finance where we rounded to the hundred thousandths. You know, we expressed everything in billions and millions because ten thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars was considered a rounding error in the scheme of quarterly results. I worked in companies where fifty thousand dollars would have made or broken a year in terms of some of the the ownership and profitability potential. But the issues were the same. 
what are your sales? How are your sales coming in? Are people tracking against budget? Are your costs in line? What's what are what other other items are impacting your financial health of your company? So at a, at a very macro level, the issues are the same. The rounding is different. The uh, from an operational perspective, obviously, the larger a company gets, the more staff you have to do things. So your your role changes a little bit, and or or a lot. You know, you you go from being uh, in a smaller company. You tend to be when you're a CFO. You tend to be the CFO who is also the director of FP&A and the chief accounting officer and the controller who has to often do. And sometimes you're the you're <laughs> you're the revenue accountant because you're telling your your finance manager this is how this is here's the revenue calc. I've proved it. It's done. It'll. It, I'm comfortable that I can defend it at audit. Book it. Send me back the results look at them as a controller, and then eventually sit with the CEO and look at them as your CFO. So you, you wear the hats at the stage. Larger companies, and, you know, my situation now and in, in other ones I've had in the past, it, you obviously have people who have those roles. And now you're still looking in on them, but you're not, you're not doing it. So the information is flowing to you and you have a little better checks and balance. You've been listening to Middle Market Executives Growth Monitor. That was Tom Fitzsimmons, CFO of TMP Worldwide. Thank you for joining us.